We want to thank you again for coming tonight. Again, as I mentioned earlier, beautiful day uh, that God has blessed this little region of the world in. And we thank, hopefully, and thank you. Thank him for it and hope you got to enjoy it. Uh, if you got your Bibles, uh, Matthew chapter 15 tonight uh, is where we are. We've been going through this on Sunday night. I know we took a detour last Sunday morning and um, just so happened uh, the passage that we had came to. So I, we, we fall, fall in love with that term just so happened a few years ago and it still rings true today uh, that verse 21 through 28 fit so perfectly last Sunday being Mother's Day. But tonight, we're in verse number 29 of Matthew 15. Pick up where we left off last Sunday morning. So if you will, please stand with me in honor of God's word. We'll read it together. Matthew 15, verse 29. The Bible says, Moving on from there, Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee. He went up on a mountain and sat there, and large crowds came to him, including the lame, the blind, the crippled, those unable to speak, and many others. They put them at his feet, and he healed them. So the crowd was amazed when they saw those unable to speak talking. The crippled restored, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they gave glory to the God of Israel. Jesus called the disciples and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they've already stayed with me three days and have nothing to eat. I don't want to send them away hungry, otherwise they might collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, Where could we get enough bread in this desolate place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked them. Seven, they said, and a few small fish. After commanding the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They collected the leftover pieces, seven large baskets full. Now there were 4,000 men who had eaten, besides women and children. After dismissing the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Magadan. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for your word. We ask now, God, that you'd bless your word and put your word into our mouth to give to your people. We thank you for your presence in this place tonight. We pray if there's anybody here lost, may you speak to them, and God, draw them to salvation. And just touch us with your spirit tonight and touch us with your word. And we take that blessing you give us out to a lost and dying world and share it with them. And we love you and praise you in Christ's name. And amen. You may be seated. May God bless his word tonight. Surrounded by needs is what we want to look at tonight with the Lord's help. Surrounded by needs. We're surrounded by needs today all around. Uh, if you step outside your door uh, and look around, you're going to encounter people with needs whether it be a health issue, whether it be maybe a financial issue, uh, something issue with their home, their family, their work. There's a need, a uh, great need around us. But of course, when you step out of your home and look around, you're going to see a spiritual need around. People need Jesus. There's a lot of it. I mean, a lot of them that need Jesus. So we, after healing the Canaanite woman's daughter, uh, Jesus moved on from where he was that, the area of Tyre and Sidon. He didn't go into there, but he was in the area. Now he's coming back along the Sea of Galilee uh, and large crowds spotted him, knew where he was at, and followed him. And he goes up to this mountain to sit there. Now, I, when I was studying last Sunday and for this one too, and um, that nugget I left with you last time about Matthew Henry, Henry, about that Canaanite woman, if she was going to be called a dog, she was going to be Jesus' dog. Man, that ran all over me when I read that. And it still sticks to me today. So I'm going to give you another one from that same, that same passage, or this passage here. Here's what he wrote, Matthew Henry. Having let fall that crumb under the table, he here, Jesus, he here returns to make a full feast for the children. I, and it's amazing, it, it ran all over me too. I, I got to share it as well. Wrote it down so I'd make sure I didn't spell anything or say anything out of order. And there it was. He let fall a crumb that changed that woman and that daughter's life for eternity. Now he's coming to the children, the children of Israel, to give them a full feast. And he's going to do healing. He's going to do all kinds of other things while he's here. So let's remind ourselves today that Jesus still meets people's physical needs. He still does. God still 
multiplies. And we're going to talk about multiplication a lot in, within this, mat, this passage tonight. God multiplies. He's a multiplying God. He is. And I thank God that he does multiply. Here we see him go. Large crowds came to him. And they, they brought the lame. They brought the una those unable to speak, the blind, the crippled, and many others. And they brought him and put him at his feet as he healed them. It's just like an assembly line. He's sitting down or standing. I'm sure he ended up being seated at some, seated at some point in time. And they just kept bringing people to him. And he's healing these people as they bring him. Now, I, I know God has unlimited power. I know he does. We, it's evident here he heals these people. Other pastors said in Matthew, all the people who were brought to him, he healed them all. Don't you think he got physically tired doing this? I, I'm, I would have to think it after going on and on and on. This didn't take a 30-minute service, an hour-long service. This was hours spent doing this. And it's in a desolate place. As the disciples call it later on in verse 33. How desolate was this place, really, though? Miracles were happening here. Jesus still meets people's physical needs today. The, these, the crowds were amazed by this power. Guess what? He's not changed. This power is still available today because God can't change. He's perfect. Why would he need to change? Why would he need to? He doesn't need to because he's perfect in every way. He still works miracles today. Not only does Jesus come... Notice first, off he heals them. He reaches out and touches people's physical needs. He performs miracles. We'll talk about miracles in a moment too. He reaches their physical needs. Then later on in the passage, he meets another physical need of feeding them natural food to eat. But what does he do while he's also there? He's pointing them to the Father. He's being their Messiah. These are most likely most Israelites. And he's meeting their spiritual needs of being their Messiah, whether they recognize it or not. He's out there doing it. Folks, I, I can only imagine uh, disaster relief programs that we have here in the state, in our county, in the state, and, and throughout the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, I can't imagine how many people have actually been brought to Christ through a disaster of one of these cooperative programs, these disaster relief trucks rolling up on the scene, uh, Samaritan's Purse rolling up on the scene, and they're sharing just a, a meal, helping maybe clean out a home or help some other need to maybe repair a roof or whatever. And in that moment, they're not just meeting the physical needs, they're sharing the gospel. They're living out Jesus to these people and they're leading them to Christ and Christ is changing their lives forever. He's still performing miracles today. He's still meeting physical needs and he's still doing so much more. Notice, he's here for the people, these people. He's here for them. He knew, there, he knew what was going to happen when he went there. He knew, he knew people would find out he was there and they'd bring all these sick people to them and he didn't, he did not forsake the opportunity to help them. When God draws you to his son, he's not going to miss the opportunity to give you what you need. He's going to meet that need when you bring it to him. He will. And that may not, again, may not be your want. It may not come the way you think, but God can meet your needs. Luke, he tells us, and, and Luke Seek my kingdom first in all these things. The world chases that what it's going to wear. The world chases that what it's going to eat. The world chases that what chases that what it's going to do. Don't worry about those things. You come to me first, and I'll meet your needs. Seek me first, he says, and I'll take care of these things. You want to worry about them. Because Jesus still meets people's physical needs today. He does. And aren't you glad that sometimes he meets them through you? He, met, he let, as I mentioned this morning earlier, of sharing the gospel with those who are lost, he, he lets us be a part of what he's doing. He didn't, we're not just bystanders watching. We're not like in a tennis match where our heads are going all, you know, back and forth, watching the ball, go back and forth. And what, what's God doing over here? What's God doing over there? What's God doing over here? Well, what about this people in the middle here? God's doing something for them too. But we're not just bystanders. We're not just 
spectators at an event. We're participants. Have you ever wanted to run through the tee at a football game? And then the same, just want to run through the tee. I, I don't care who wins the football. I don't care if they, you know, I, you know whatever. I don't care who wins the game. It'd be awesome just to run through the tee one time, you know, just run through it, you know. Have you ever seen the little kids? I watched this one thing the other day, and these little kids, probably a little peewee football game, and they had little girls out there being chillers, you know, and they spread out this big, huge banner for the kids to run through, and here come these little toddlers, and they're just running as fast as they can, you know, and they miss the banner. Half of them miss it and go on the other side. Suddenly, then half the team is coming through the banner this way, and the other half, and they're just bamming it, you know. And it was the most, it was the cutest thing. They were participants, though. Parents are all thinking it's great. Some, some are probably going, oh, that's my son going the wrong way. You know, you know, they're the spectators. But to the kids, I'm on the field. I'm in the uniform. When we walk out this door, folks, we have the uniform of Jesus Christ on us. If you were in Sunday school this morning, you talked about the armor of God. We're to put on his armor, his insignia. His name is written on our hearts. We represent him when we go out. We're not spectators. We are participants. Jesus still meets people's physical needs today, and he does it through us quite often. Now, he still does miracles today. Do you believe that? He still does miracles today, I believe. Sometimes, well, let me read what I wrote down here. Miracles are all around us. Sometimes we just don't see them because we don't ask to see them. Our eyes aren't open for them. We're too busy. We're like horses at a, at a derby. You know, they put the blinders on there so they can't see the competitor on the other side and get spooked, you know? they are blinders on them to look straight ahead. Sometimes we are so fixed on what's going on in our life, we can't see what God's doing in somebody else's life. We can't see it. We miss out and we forget that it's, this life is not just about us. I'm sorry, it's not. Now, I've told you who your best friend is, right? Me, myself, and I, right? That's my best friends too, right? But this world's not all, this life is not all about me. It's about us as a whole, not just this body of believers, but the entire church of God, but also the communities around each congregation. It's about them too. This life is about using what God has given us especially when it comes to spiritual things and sharing that with the world. And when we do that, then God allows us also the privilege of sharing resources that he gives us in the physical sense. But then he also lets us see him work miracles in their lives. Do you know when somebody comes to faith in Christ, that is a miracle that cannot be matched by anything in this world? I mean, I, I'm, I'm telling you something. You could, run up, you could run up on an accident on the way home tonight. And you can get there right when the ambulance gets there and somebody is outside the vehicle and that, has, that, they're, they're, that is coded, that's dead. And they, they bring out the paddles and, and they put them on them and they shock them back and they give them mouth to mouth or whatever and they bring that person back to life. And we think, that's a great miracle. And, it, and, it, and it, in essence, it is. But that person is still going to face physical death someday. The greater miracle, the greater miracle is that that person comes to faith in Christ. It's a greater miracle. He still does miracles today. The miracles of healing. You know what he does? And multiplication here were unheard of in that day and time. Nobody else. Now, I know he'd already fed the 5,000, and you, I, can dare, I can tell you that did not go unnoticed by the crowds, you know? He, hey, he fed five, there was 5,000 men here this last time. I wonder who counted that. I wonder who counted that crowd. Yeah, yeah, I, let, me, let me tell some people here. I ain't going to name names, but we've, I've been here long enough to know who counts the congregation numbers. I know, I know who does it, you know. He looks around, I can, see them, I can see their eyes moving back and forth. You know, I know who does it. It's okay, it's all right. Who was the one counting the crowd? Somebody did guess what? Jesus didn't need to count. He knew everybody who was there. He knew every man, every woman, every child who was in that crowd when he fed the 5,000. And he knows, who's, he knows everybody who's here in this time too. He knows everybody who's there. And he knows what he's going to do. 
He knows he's going to do this. Think about the multiplication. Now, I know, we, I know many times you read this passage and, and you focus on the, 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 the seven loaves of bread and the few fish and you get seven baskets from that of leftovers. And, and that's the miracle. And it is a miracle. But what he does, he multiplies. It, what was seven loaves, seven small loaves of bread, not like we have, you know, today. The seven loaves of bread suddenly filled up seven baskets of leftovers. Seven baskets. And these were not, these were large baskets. These were not small little things, half a bushel or a bushel, you know, hiding under a bushel, no. No, these were big baskets that were suddenly filled up with leftovers. He multiplies. Think about, think about this way. When one person, when one person comes to faith in Jesus Christ, that person suddenly, they could be an only child and only have maybe a mom or a dad at home and really no other family to mention. That little kid comes to faith in Christ, guess what happens to them? Suddenly their family multiplies by the millions. Suddenly they've been brought into the family of God and they suddenly have a ton of brothers and sisters in the faith. God multiplies. I mentioned the cooperative program earlier. We give to that uh, through different offerings and through our, our, our monthly giving. God takes, you know, we, we give to the Gideons, we give to offerings of Christmas Child and other things that we give here. God takes our little that we have to give, which we may think is little, but to God I think it's pretty big. You know, the, the little widow, the widow gave the two, is all she had, two little mites, the smallest coins of the day. That's all she had, and she gave it. And Jesus said, hey, that woman gave more than anybody else here today because she gave out of her heart. Everybody else gave out of their excess. She gave all she had. When we give what God tells us to, whatever it might be, God takes it and multiplies it. He takes these few loaves of bread and these few fish, and he multiplies it to feed this entire crowd. And it is a miracle. Notice what happens in this miracle. After he does this, he commands the crowd to sit down. Okay? He took the seven loaves, gave thanks, broke them, and gave the disciples. They all ate and were satisfied. You see that? Go back up to what happened in verse number 31 at the end of it. So the crowd was amazed when they saw those unable to speak talking and crippled, restored, the lame walking and the blind seeing, and they gave glory to the God of Israel. He doesn't mention they gave glory to God when they ate. I would, think, I would have to think they did. It's just not mentioned there. But you see, they came that day for healing. They came that day to see Jesus, and they got to saw him, which was the miracle of seeing him, their Messiah. And they received their healing. But then he went a step further and fed them physically, but also spiritually. I don't think, I, I mentioned, I kind of, kind of mentioned in passing assembly line, you know, bring brother so and so up, heal him, next one, next. I don't think it was that way. I think every person who came to him, he talked to, he interacted with them. How, 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 how can God do this? How can God hear your prayer, your prayer, and your prayer, and my prayer at the same time? How can God do that? Ask him when you get to heaven, because I have no clue how he does it. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. That's how he does it, I know, but I can't comprehend that. Every, we could, a few moments ago, we're all on the altar. We're praying. All of us, hopefully, are praying to God at that moment in time. He heard every one of us. He is able to do that because he's about this power of multiplication. But in all these things, every miracle done in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and any miracle done today, he does them to bring himself glory. Not man's glory. Not anybody else's glory. Later on in Acts, where Peter's shadow is passing over people, and people are being healed. They just want his shadow to pass over him. And nobody ever asked for my shadow, you know. 
Nobody ever asked for my sweat rag either, or my spit rag, you know. Nobody ever, anybody want it? It ain't going to help you or anything, right? But they were asking for Paul's sweat rags as he's out making a tent. He's sweating profuse to make a tent. They were asking for those rags and then bringing home those to the sick and laying them on them, and they were healed. Were they praising Paul? No. They knew that God was with Paul and that Paul was doing the will of God, and they were trying their way to get any way they could to get closer to God to find help in time of need. God received the glory. Paul never took it. Peter never took it. They always deflected it to God when God done something miraculous. When Peter was rescued from prison, he didn't say, hey, man, look at what I did. I got out of there. No, he knew it was God's angel who had been sent to rescue him. He gave glory to God. All these miracles you see Jesus do is to glorify the Father while he's here on this earth. Yes, he's receiving the glory because he's God in the flesh, I know. But even him, even Jesus himself deflected the glory to the Father. The miracles, he still does them today. Then lastly, Jesus still sets people free today. He still sets them free today. Those sick, those lame, those blind were set free from their condition. They were. They were set free. They were set free. You know, last time we talked about those, uh, uh, the, the, the little girl who was demon-possessed, is she not set free? Huh. She was set free from her possession. She was set free to have a new life in Christ. Those unable to speak, so they could talk. I've never been unable to hear. I've never been unable to see completely. I would hate to lose those two senses. I, can, I think I could handle losing my sense of smell and taste. Wouldn't like it. But if I had to choose two to get rid of, I'd choose those two. But to be able to hear and see, if you've never experienced that, you don't know what those people go through. I watched this little documentary on this kid who... Couldn't see color. He's colorblind. And they got him those glasses that he can put the glasses on and see color. And it was amazing. I'm sorry, that was a, a man that this man received these glasses and he put them on. He just began to weep because he could suddenly see the colors that he had not been able to see. Along that same documentary was this kid who was unable to hear. And they were able to give him, I don't know if it was a cochlear implant or something else that they implanted in his ear. And they turned it on. And he suddenly heard sounds for the very first time. And it was just like mind-blowing for this kid. These people had been through things that many of us never will go through. And suddenly they're set free from it by the power of the living God. Jesus still sets people free today now these crowds they ate they were satisfied hmm. have you ever come to Jesus and not been satisfied when you left hmm. whose fault was it if you were if you leave God's table unsatisfied it's not his fault it's not it's yours it's yours hmm. now we find the disciples uh, we they, they saw him feed the 5,000 plus women and children. And here they, they do it again. I, Jesus, I don't want to see these people away hungry. Let's feed them. Where are we going to get enough bread for these people? In the next chapter, when we get into that, maybe next couple weeks, he'll ask them, didn't you remember? Don't you remember? Don't you remember? Don't you remember? Don't ever forget that Jesus still sets people free. When you were lost, when I was lost, and I came to faith in Christ, only by the grace of God did I come. He drew me. He convicted me. He called me. He saved me. He done it all. He gave me the faith to believe. I was set free. I didn't do nothing but say yes. 
and accepted it. That's all I did. He did everything else. It's not about me. Salvation wasn't about me. It was about him. It was about him, not about you. But when you remember what he did for you, he set you free from the judgment of sin, which is hell. He set you free from that. He still does that today. We should pray for him to keep setting people free today. Hmm. The crowds saw uh, the people who had been unable to speak talking, the crippled restored, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they gave glory to God because these people have been set free. They've been set free. You know, Zechariah, when he goes in, when he goes in the beginning of the Gospels, he goes in to, to make the sacrifice there in the temple. It's his turn to serve in the temple. And they begin to scratch their heads. He's been in there a long time. What's going on? He's having an encounter with God in there. God tells him, you and your wife are going to have a child. Um, she's old. I'm old. How can this be? It's going to happen, and you ain't going to be able to speak until it does happen. He comes out and motion with his hands, you know. He can't speak. He can't speak until John is born, and they give him something to write on because they wanted to call him Zechariah. No. His name's going to be John. And they, let's, let's ask his father. He can't talk. Give me something to write on. He gets something around him. His name is John. And then his mouth opened up. His mouth opened up. He was set free from doubting what God could do. God still sets people free today. And this is what we got to pray for. Pray for God to keep meeting physical needs because we're surrounded by them, folks. Keep praying for God to let us be a part of that work. Maybe small Small parts here, small parts there, but in the, in, in the framework of what God does, there are miracles, folks. There are amazing moments of God using you to do something for other people. It's amazing. Hmm. We need to keep praying for God to keep doing miracles and to keep praying for him to keep setting people free. Think about it again. That Matthew Henry quote I gave you earlier. He let fall a crumb for that woman and her daughter. And a crumb changed their lives for eternity. But God offers us the feast. This woman, that woman and her daughter, last, in that previous passage, they got the feast too. They got it too. These people in this passage, they're getting the feast from God. Folks, every time we come to God, we have a feast waiting for us. Let's partake of the feast that God gives us, thank Him for it, and then tell people where they can get it as well. I've never come away shorthanded from God. I've never come away hungry or lacking what I need when I came to God and submitted everything to Him. It may not have been exactly what I thought, when I thought, but I didn't leave, I didn't leave empty. He gave me what I need. People need to know that today. He still works miracles. and He can do it for them, and He can still set them free. Let's pray. Father, thank You for Your Word tonight. Thank You for this time together. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. Father, we just lift up your holy name and thank you that you are the one who meets our needs. Yes, God, we are surrounded by them. We, we know they're all around us, uh, people in need every day, whether it be a physical need, uh, whether it be a spiritual need, especially those that are lost. They're in deep spiritual need, Father, of the gospel. Help us to keep uh, asking you to help us uh, to meet those needs and to be a part of what you're doing to meet those needs. God, we can't save anybody. Uh, we know that. But God, we know that you call us to share the gospel. You call us to follow you. You call us to preach. You call us to uh, help other people believe in your son Jesus. And then you do the saving work. You do the miracle work. But you let us be a part of it. Help us to remember that you're still setting people free today. Father, I pray if there's anybody here lost or not, that you speak to them, draw them to you. Anybody who may watch this later that's touched by this, by you, God, may you speak to them and draw them to salvation and set them free from their sin. In Christ's name we pray. And amen. Let's get a song for you to come.